Magnetars are stellar remnants, products of stars more massive than our sun, about eight times or more. And these parent stars ended their lives following supernova explosions, leaving compact objects of about 20 kilometers diameter behind and containing half a million times the mass of our planet, the Earth. And these remnants are known as neutron stars. But in contrast to ordinary neutron stars, magnetars are neutron stars with magnetic fields which are 1,000 times or even bigger, reaching between 10 and 100 million Tesla, the unit of magnetic field strength. I think um, if one passes a neutron star, a magnetar, at the distance of the moon, it would swipe out all your data on a credit card you have in your hands. So it's, it's really intense, even if it's so far away. From time to time, these magnetars, uh, they rearrange their magnetic fields. As you can imagine, magnetic fields are very active. One of, of the best examples we have is our sun, where we have these so kind of solar flares, which from time to time even affect us here on Earth. Giant flares from magnetars are celestial eruptions, very energetic events, and they have been detected in only two magnetars of about 30 so far in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. The one we report in our research detected on every 15 is the most distant one found so far, and yet it was located in the brightest galaxy of the Sculptor Group, which is in the direction of the Sculptor Constellation at about 13 million light years. With the ASIM instrument now, we have detected one of these giant flares and we were able to look into the very first phase of the flare. The importance of the ASIM detection is that for the first time we were able to look into this very first few milliseconds. And we can observe these QPOs. We have seen these quasi periodic oscillations for other giant flares. There have not been too many of them observed up to now. Well, uh, at the beginning, we were indeed surprised. This discovery opens up prospects for neutron star asteroseismology. And we have performed a lot of diagnosis tests based on advanced Bayesian inference methods and Markov, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo simulations. And we found that these tests indicate that pure noise cannot easily explain this excess power in the observed data. What we discovered, namely, quasi-periodic oscillations at 1,000 or even higher hertz has been seen in the oscillating tail emission of giant flares. But once again, here we are seeing the initial heart spike or the main peak in full details and telling us that what generates these oscillations close to periodic oscillations are actually triggered at the very onset of these gigantic bursts. Detecting QPOs in the main burst was phenomenal, important, anticipated, but at the same time, we were very skeptical to ensure that what we are observing is not an instrumental artifact. So a lot of time was devoted to ensure that it is not due to electronics or any other aspects of the instruments. And in the end, the final outcome is that these are really coming from the active state of a neutron star that is highly magnetized. The spectral variations in the beginning of the burst tell the story of what was going on at the moment of the explosion. So they help us understanding the processes at play in these mysterious objects. So first we have a fireball of particles expanding almost at the speed of light. Then we have photons and plasma interacting with a very strong magnetic field resulting in photons of even higher energy. As the fireball expands, the average energy of the photons and the intensity of the emission decrease until we see again what we think is the emission from the expanding fireball itself. The ASIM instrument aboard the International Space Station was the only instrument out of seven 
which detected the giant flare that recorded the main pair's phase without being blinded by the giant flares of high energy radiation, which saturated the other six detectors at the time of the maximum emission. Along with sudden spectral variations, our discovery of the extremely high frequency oscillations during the burst peak of this very powerful source in the Scopus galaxy has provided a new crucial component to understanding magnetic giant flares, how magnetic stresses in and around a neutron star are produced. We can say that this April 15 event was a game changer. Our instrument on OSIM was designed to observe very short and high intensity terrestrial gamma ray flashes, the so-called TGFs from thunderstorm. These flashes are a few hundred photons in just 10 to 100 microseconds. So OSIM needed to have both a large detection area and fast electronics. Compared to the TGFs, the giant flare from this magnetar is a relatively slow event. And that is why the instrument was not saturated during the most intense phase of the burst from the giant flare. It is just amazing that Austin could make this important contribution to astrophysics. <laughs>